before you guys make the decision to buy a home or buy an investment property in a certain market, it is fundamentally necessary to perform this analysis. If you don't, you could be missing out uh, you know, on walking into a really bad situation where you're paying top dollar for a market that's in a bubble and oversupplied in a situation where you're you know, likely going to lose money in the long run. So you need to perform this analysis to know what you're getting into. How's it going everyone? This is Nick. I'm back here with another ReVenture YouTube cast and I'm really excited about today's episode because we're going to talk about the most common question that I get from real estate investors around the country. And that question is, how do I know that I'm not buying into a real estate bubble right now? Here we are in early 2021 and home values have been going up consistently over the last five to six years and have really spiked over the last year. So a lot of people are concerned. They're saying, you know, if I'm making the biggest financial decision of my life to either buy a home or to buy an investment property, is now the right time? So to answer the question, it's really important to pay attention to the fundamentals, right? Because if we don't pay attention to the fundamentals, we're going to get distracted by all the chatter, right? All the chatter from, you know, the news outlets and the newspapers and the realtors and the brokers. Everyone who's chattering about the real estate market saying, oh, you're going to miss out. Yeah, right. You're going to miss out if you don't buy right now. Um, and they might be right about that. But to determine if they're right about that, we need to analyze the fundamentals, right? And there's three fundamental things that determine the direction of a real estate market. Those three things are job growth, number one, increasing the amount of people who earn an income who are able to buy or rent a home. That is huge for real estate markets. Now, the second thing is the relationship between the growth in jobs to the growth in home values. Are those two things tracking together or are they diverging? And then the third thing is permitting supply, right? So on one hand, we have jobs over here, which is the demand for real estate. And then the permitting supply is over here. That's the supply for real estate. So to um, show you guys these concepts and how ReVenture Consulting uses data to advise its clients, um, let's start by looking at those first two fundamentals, job growth and home prices. So on this graph, we're looking at job growth, the green line against home price growth, the magenta line in Boise, Idaho, over the last 15 years or so. And the first thing that's apparent is you can see there's a decently strong relationship between the two. So if we go back to the mid 2000s, we had both really high job growth, really high value growth in Boise. And then, you know, around 08, 09, um, both of them tanked right? Uh, went heavily negative. You could see values in Boise fell by 15% in 2009. They fell by another 8% in 2010 and then another 14% in 2011. So Boise had like three to four years of just really tough times in their real estate market. And a lot of it was related to this huge decline, almost 10% decline in jobs. And that makes sense, right? If there's a recession and all of a sudden the amount of jobs in the economy declines by 10%, well, uh, it's going to be hard to uh, stimulate demand to buy real estate or to rent apartments. So it makes sense that real estate values would go down. If you guys are enjoying the data presented in this video, please leave a like and hit subscribe down below. Turn on your subscribe notifications. This is really important information. If you're a real estate investor, you're not going to want to miss it going forward. All right, let's go back to the video. It also makes sense that in the subsequent years, as jobs you know, recovered, in Boise and started getting back to you know that three to four percent growth range per year, home values would go back up. And you can see we actually had like a big momentary spike in 2013 as it was coming from uh, the trough of 2011, 2012. Uh, but then you know as you can see going forward in the rest of the decade in the 2010s, home prices in Boise increased, jobs increased. But I, what I want to pull your guys' attention to here is the gap between the magenta and the green lines. So you can see since 2015 in Boise, there's just a widening gap in home price appreciation and job growth, right? And that gap has gotten extraordinarily large now in late 2020, right? Um, through October of 2020, home prices in Boise went up by 16%. Jobs were flat, right? So we're seeing a 
big kind of shift from, you know, jobs and values tracking each other to values just starting to increase a lot more than jobs in Boise. And that should be a cause for concern if you're a real estate investor. Because you, know, you can see in Boise here, the job growth actually started going down what, way before COVID actually. You know, we were at 5% job growth in Boise in 2018. It declined down to almost 3% prior to COVID. So, you know, and that's normal. There was a slowing in growth, but prices haven't stopped growing. And this is a cause for concern. If your market is showing accelerating value growth, you know, not just value growth, but accelerating value growth, while job growth is flat or declining, that is a risk factor for your market. That's probably not a market that I would want to buy into right now. You know, you're buying at a time when prices are really high and the fundamentals that, you know, basically sustain real estate demand jobs are really low. Now, of course, this isn't the only thing that matters jobs, right? Because there's another side to the equation that we talked about before, and that's permitting and supply. Um, there's two sides to the equation. So one, we have demand and jobs. The other, we have supply and permitting. If Boise isn't building enough new homes and new apartments, then it's conceivable that even in the face of declining job growth, home values could still be going up. Let's check and see if that is actually the case. All right, so now we're back to Boise. The green line is still job growth. Now the orange line is permitting expansion. How many new permits is Boise issuing for single family homes and apartments as a percentage of its existing housing demand? And if, again, we go back to the mid 2000s, we can see that a principal issue in Boise was that starting around 07, permitting was much higher than job growth. And that's a problem, right? That's one of the reasons why Boise had a, such a stiff decline and long decline in real estate values uh, then was because for a good, almost four years, they basically permitted the orange line way more uh, new housing than they had jobs to satisfy that housing. Now, fortunately, starting around 2011, that trend was re reversed. You can see the green line started getting healthily above the orange line, right? And so that's good for housing. That does explain why Boise has seen more value growth than it has job growth over the last five to six years is because basically there was a housing shortage. This green line being above this orange line means there's more jobs than new home supply. There is a housing shortage. But again, I'm gonna call your attention to not just this tremendously large gap here in late 2020. I'm gonna call your attention to the, the gap that started forming around early to mid 2019. You can see it was around then that job growth in Boise started to decline just as permitting started to increase. So even again, prior to COVID, we started seeing a gap in Boise where supply was greater than demand. And so this is problematic, right? You know, it's one thing to have escalating values right, as Boise is having. It's another thing to have escalating values when the supply of real estate is exceeding the demand for real estate. Now, I suspect if you're an investor or a realtor or broker in Boise, you're gonna tell me I'm crazy because you're gonna say right now, there's no housing inventory, there's no housing supply. And you're right for right now. But all that new permitting that's taken place over the last year or two, that's gonna to start to get delivered the middle of this year, the end of this year, that's when we're gonna to start to see a big increase in the inventory and supply of homes. Additionally, one of the big things that's stimulating real estate markets right now is a temporary shift from renting to owning in fairly more well-off households, which they call renters by choice. These renters during COVID decided that now was the right time to buy. And we're seeing a big upswell in real estate demand because of that. However, 
There's not an endless amount of these renters who are going to shift to home ownership. There's only so many people who have the money and the credit score to get a loan to buy a house, especially in an escalating home value market. So once we see the, the drop off in that you know, temporary shift of renters by choice to owning, combined with the increased permitting and the increase in supply, combined with the fact that prices now in a place like Boise are really, really high historically, when we see all those things combine, that's when you're gonna have problems in a real estate market. Now this is an analysis that you can do on any market that you want, including the city or the market that you live in. So there's um, three sources that I use to get this data. To get the jobs data, I went to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and they have great uh, historical resources to get historical jobs for different markets. To get the value data, I went to Zillow and got historical home value data going back 20 years for different markets. And then to get the permitting data, I went to the US Census website, which tracks permitting uh, by market. And all this data is free, publicly available. You can download it. And if you know a little bit of Excel, you'll be able to format it and analyze it yourself. And so, you know, before you guys make the decision to buy a home or buy an investment property in a certain market, it is fundamentally necessary to perform this analysis. If you don't, you could be missing out, uh, you know, on walking into a really bad situation where you're paying top dollar for a market that's in a bubble and oversupplied in a situation where you're, you know, likely going to lose money in the long run. So you need to perform this analysis to know what you're getting into. If you want help with that, I offer coaching services to teach people how to use data to make better decisions in terms of real estate investment, whether it be buying a house or buying an investment property. Uh, if you're interested in that, go to www.reventureconsulting.com and submit a contact form with your name and a brief description about what you're doing in real estate. Please also subscribe, leave a like and comment. I love hearing your feedback. Uh, suggest some markets for me to explore in future videos. And until next time, this is Nick signing off. Oh,